I hate when people say party in my, your mouth, but for some reason I'm thinking of that. I'm not gonna say that, <laughs> but it's a kaleidoscope in your mouth. Mm. Hi, I'm Eric Kim. I am a cooking writer for the New York Times food section, and today I'm making sheet pan bibimbap. And it's almost like, oh, another sheet pan recipe, but um, the end result is so delicious. It's so simple, so quick. People think bibimbap is this very complicated thing to make and to eat at home, but for my family, it was a midnight snack growing up. It was like, we're really hungry, we need to eat, and no one had the energy. This kind of draws on that inspiration. It's also just really, um, it's really chill. I think that's the main point about this recipe, it's chill. <laughs> I have a nice story about this recipe. So last July, I drove down to Atlanta, where my mother lives, and stayed with her for, for many, many months working on this cookbook. We wrote together, we cooked together every day. It was an invaluable experience. Everyone talks about writing down your family recipes. I actually got to do it, and... Uh, I, whew. I'm trying not to cry. A lot of new dishes came out of it as well, including this peeping pop. It happened on accident because I only had a little bit of time to feed the family. She ate it and she loved it and she was like, I am never making peeping pop the other way again. First things first, rice. This is peeping pop. Peeping means mixed, pop means rice. I want to show you how I like to make rice. Very simple. It's very perfect, I think. <laughs> I've, uh, I've perfected it. You can also use leftover rice. Uh, an ex-boyfriend taught me this. Can you believe that? An ex-boyfriend taught me how to make rice. <laughs> now I just, oops, tumble this in. It's my favorite rice cooker that I've ever had. There's a lot of contention on the internet about whether or not you're supposed to soak your rice. I always soak my rice, especially when it's one-to-one. -one. You just want to make sure that the rice cooks evenly. So this is so versatile. Obviously, everyone says that about sheet pans, but I think the thing that I, I love most about it is that it's such a large surface area. What that means is you don't want the vegetables to steam. If you put them in a single layer on this sheet pan, they are going to caramelize and get really delicious and reduce. I'm gonna say reduce a lot. You wanna reduce things. That's what cooking is, like making things smaller so that they taste more intense. If this has been soaking for like 10 minutes, I'm gonna turn it on. And that's it. I'm gonna chop some vegetables. I'm gonna assemble them in quadrants. Remember like four square? No, sorry, not four square. Wait, oh, was it called four square? When, it's like the ball. Oh, that's four square, right? That was fun. Anyway, <laughs> it's nice to have like a mixture. I'm happy with that. So the sweet potatoes are next. I do recommend like cutting it in half. Okay. Half moon shapes. So. Sweet potatoes especially are super wet. So you really want to make sure those are truly in a single layer. I really like it in half moons. They caramelize better in my opinion because they start to separate. I've cooked with my mom and cooked so much in the last year. It was wild, it was like a master class. You just want them into bite-sized pieces. This is about, you know, a single layer. It's perfect. I've got my gorgeous vegetables, the quadrants. I love this because it's, I don't know, it's pretty. Orange, green, purple. Brown. I feel like that's good. What the salt does is it, it draws out some of the moisture first, and we do want the moisture to come out. Tossing it will certainly spread out the, the oil and the seasoning better. That sheet pan's ready. That's it. Um, that's the prep work. I talked a lot, but if I weren't talking, this would have, this takes like five, 10 minutes, right? Now I'm gonna show you the spring one. I haven't actually tried this yet. <laughs> How cute is this? So the first time I made this, I was truly just using up what I had in the fridge. And that was really delicious. They don't seem like they'd be that special in, in a dish like this, but I think that's my point. You use what you have and it's just, you're gonna have an egg on there, you're gonna have some gochujang in there, you're gonna have some sesame oil. It's really nice, no matter what vegetables you have. And so I wanted to show you a version that has um, kind of those flavors. They're, they're more delicate than this nice, like hearty version. So what we're gonna do is use these tops. These are so good. Don't, don't throw them out. Roast them. These wilt, so... Mm. Aw, it's kind of pretty, actually. They're cute. With the rhubarb, we're not roasting the rhubarb. I want to try pickling them with the spring version because all the other flavors are so delicate. When people imagine, you know, um, a son cooking with the mother, it's like, oh, it's so warm, it's so sweet. Um, it, it was, but we're also both very similar, so there's a lot of bickering. Well, I do it like this. I was like, well, I do it like this. And we both became like 15 year olds, just like trying to one up each other. But it ended up being this really healthy competition. <laughs> she has decades of experience. I should definitely listen to everything she says. But um, I also, you know, am a cook 
and a food writer, so those are so pretty. Um, this is kind of like my standard version that I like the most, but here's a new spring version. We're gonna roast them both at 450 degrees. I'm gonna pull the spring one out much earlier because these are much more delicate. But as these roast in the oven, I'm going to prepare the second sheet pan so that it's ready for me with the rice and the eggs. I have a little trick when you're roasting vegetables, especially watery vegetables like all those. Maybe like five or 10 minutes into cooking, I do this. It's like whoosh. I sort of let like the steam out. I'm convinced that that'll make the air in there like a little drier. See how I'm like really trying to like get rid of the water. I'm taking these out. These are ready. Mm -hmm. The sweet potatoes, kale, all that. That has about five more minutes to go. I'm going to take out the tray that's been preheating and assemble the, the rice and the eggs so that those cook, and then the sweet potato, kale, that will cook. They'll like finish at the same time. A little salt. I like pepper. This is the hardest part where you're just like, oh. Every oven is so different. Just check the eggs, and as soon as the white looks done, take it out. Vegetables are done, so. Mmm. oh my god. I'm gonna make myself a bowl. So I'm gonna take some of this rice, mushrooms, and then some sweet potatoes. Mm. This is a Korean fermented chili paste. Sesame oil always reminds me of my mom. And that's it. That is sheep pan bibimbap. It's really pretty to look at. What's next is you're gonna, you're gonna mix it all together. It's really good. This is my first bite of food um, today. It's like two o'clock. <laughs> this is super chill. I feel like I promised a chill thing. The process was very simple, but the end result is really complex and it tastes really wonderful. And I think the point is that you use whatever you like and don't use whatever you don't like. <laughs> Do you guys want some? <laughs> Absolutely. Thank you.